www.ingridaycoachingcenter.com and the world's number one English fluency guide. It is a pleasure to be back here on another live video. Hopefully we get some uh, people here because I think this will be a fun lesson. I actually sent a uh, kind of basically this lesson to learners because I had an interesting experience with a Japanese textbook and uh, so just me going back and reviewing some old things and I like to see how other people teach uh, and it was interesting this kind of mistake that there was in the textbook. Uh, so anyway today we're going to be talking about strategic vocabulary building and how this is different from the typical vocabulary building you will find on lessons here on YouTube and really just most lessons anywhere. Uh, so the basic idea is that the typical way people learn vocabulary, they think uh, kind of tactically, I'll just put this up here, tactic. So tactic, they're just thinking about a particular strategy. Good morning from Indonesia, nice to see you there. So thinking about a, like a particular word or phrase, uh, usually the format for learning vocabulary, you will have a word so we'll just put vocabulary here, but it just means a, a word or phrase, whatever the target is. And it could also be uh, grammar, some grammar point or pronunciation, something where we're going to focus on a particular part of the language and we're going to focus on it tactically rather than strategically. I'll show you that in a minute. So we have the vocab and then maybe we get a definition. Uh, and depending on where you're learning it, you might get a translation. Uh, and then basically that's it. So you would get uh, the vocabulary, get the definition, maybe you, maybe you get a little background about the vocabulary, something like that. You would review it, maybe, maybe get some examples. So one, two examples, three examples, and then you would move on to the next thing. All right, so this is the learning of vocabulary in a tactical way where you're not, you're not thinking about the bigger picture and how this is going to affect your speaking. All right. So I focus on helping people speak fluently and confidently because this is what I struggled with when I was learning Japanese. I spent a lot of time learning vocabulary tactically. So studying flashcards uh, or things about, you know, grammar points or pronunciation or something like that. But I wasn't thinking strategically about that. And so until I started thinking strategically and by strategically, so we're talking about the, the, the bigger strategy. I'm putting this up here because really the, the, the bigger strategy or the deeper strategy uh, is really to have thinking about how is, how is this individual thing that you're learning, how is that going to affect your broader ability to communicate? So this is thinking strategically, all right? So we'll erase uh, tactic right here uh, and we'll keep the, the target vocabulary. So remember, most of the videos you will find on YouTube are basically this. They're teaching tactical vocabulary. And the reason people do this is because students, uh, they love to learn new vocabulary. <laughs> <clears throat> so every day people are like, teach me new words, teach me new words. And I say, well, do you remember the word that you learned yesterday? And a lot of people say no. <laughs> So it's fun, you know, you get this, but again, my, my problem when I was a learner, and I think a lot of people also have this problem, uh, is they know a lot, but they actually can't use what they know, all right? So if you have a similar problem or you know what I'm talking about, let me know. You can tell me in the comments. Uh, but the basic idea is that people, they learn a lot of vocabulary, but they can't actually use that vocabulary fluently, and that's the important part, all right? So let's think... Uh, strategically about how we build vocabulary and the goal is to use that vocabulary without thinking and without translating or hesitating in conversations. Does that sound good? Hopefully that makes sense. And see if I'm looking, I'm, I'm always, I'm <laughs> I just, I noticed this when I looked at the, um, uh, the, the live video that I did uh, last week. <laughs> So I was doing the live video and I'm looking right now, I'm looking at the microphone, thinking it's a camera. <laughs> the camera is over here. Hello. Nice to see you there. So I will try to focus on that. It's just funny how I, I'm like used to doing this. And on, uh, on Instagram, the, the camera is the opposite way. <clears throat> anyway, I just, I thought that was funny, but I will try to focus more on this camera 
over here. I'm recording this on my phone actually, but hopefully you enjoy this. All right, so let's think strategically about this and by strategically, again, I mean the goal of using something fluently. We don't want to just learn something and forget it and then move on to the next thing. We want to actually learn something so we remember it. All right, so strategically, there are basically two parts to this. It almost looks like a heart. I guess you could, you could look at it like this or like a, a Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram is like this. You got uh, two circles here and you know something in the middle. But the, the tactical part is really the least important part. So the vocabulary itself is the least important part. The greater strategy is how we're going to learn this and how we're going to review it, okay? So we've got the learning part and then we've got the review. And I'll explain a little bit more about this process, but I wanted to tell you a story uh, that I was mentioning at the beginning of this video, and that was when I was looking through a Japanese textbook, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there was the, the Japanese word nebo, nebo. You don't need to remember this word, but this is a, a Japanese word. It basically means to oversleep. And this is how I understand it in Japanese. But what was interesting is in this textbook, it actually said it means oversleep and to sleep in. So nebo, nebo suru, uh, means to oversleep and it means to sleep in according to that textbook. And I said, well, that's it. they're actually the opposite in English. Now, you might sometimes hear a native say oversleep and sleep in, but uh, most of the time these are going to mean the opposite thing. So imagine you are going to have a meeting tomorrow, you need to wake up early and so you set the alarm on your phone, you go to sleep and in the middle of the night your phone alarm or your actual phone, the battery dies. And so you wake up late, you know, you wake up in the morning and oh my god, the, the phone's dead and you check the wall clock and you see, oh no, I overslept, I overslept. So this is a, just a quick story about the, the use of oversleep, but what I explained in this email yesterday, so that's part of learning, so usually learning by stories, uh, with the goal really of understanding like a native. So I can tell you a story and help you understand some vocabulary, and instead of giving you a definition or a translation I can help you understand from the context and this is how natives learn so we want to help you understand like a native and stories are one example of this so you hear the word oversleep uh, and you think about that like okay is oversleep the same thing as sleeping in and when I tell you that story it really could be either it could be I, I overslept or oh I slept in it's as a learner you might not remember which one it is so what I was doing in this email that I sent people yesterday is also, so we have again the learning part where you're understanding something. This is usually the first time you hear something. Maybe you hear some new vocabulary from a movie or a TV show or a video like this. Uh, but the even more important part strategically is the review. So to understand a word like oversleep, we want to give you a lot more review about that. So we can give you just like a, a few different examples. Or I can, you know, I'll put this in the, the present. So to overeat, overeat. Let me try to look in the camera again. So I was going to this party and I was sitting there enjoying a delicious meal and all the food was so good that I ate too much. I overate. I overate. Now I wouldn't be a live video without a, uh, without a fire truck or an ambulance or something like that. Uh, so over, again, we're starting not repeating the same word again and again like a typical learner. We want to get review in different ways. So this is what I call naturally very review. You don't want to just uh, repeat the same phrase again and again. Really, the point is to help you understand it like a native and then hear that example in many different ways. So that could be from different speakers or it could be at different times. Uh, it could be for uh, 
like we're going to hear make like my mom say that and then my dad say that and then we're going to hear it in one movie or a different movie. There are lots of different examples. And so this is one example where we're trying to just focus on one usage of something. So we have many meanings for over, but a native doesn't really try to learn all of them at the same time. They want to focus on one meaning to really understand that. Again, the goal strategically, we want to learn vocabulary so that we can remember it and use it automatically. Okay, so we have overeat and we have oversleep. We'll put oversleep up here. And each time we introduce a new word, it helps you feel more fluent and confident because you understand that thing even better. All right, so next we have, let's say I went to a restaurant and I paid too much. So what do you think that would be? I'll let you figure out the example for that one. But as you, you start thinking like this, you develop the ability to recognize patterns and to use patterns of the language. So if I go to a restaurant, the bill was supposed to be uh, $20. So it's a $20 bill, but I actually spent 200. What did I just do? This is your ability to kind of follow the pattern and see if you can figure this out. And as you think more like this, uh, it's going to help you think again, more like a native. So you speak like that one, boom. You overpaid, overpaid, all right? Now again, it's not my job as a teacher. When you teach tactically, you're telling someone what vocabulary means. But the goal of a guide, what I do, is actually trying to help you understand like a native and for you to fill in the blanks, for you to develop an understanding of the language so you use it fluently. All right, it's not about me telling you vocabulary. I want you to understand that vocabulary so you use it fluently. All right, let's see if we can think of any more examples. All right, so we've got oversleep, and then the, the past tense is in there too, like I overslept yesterday, I overslept this morning, or I will overeat, or I overate yesterday. Can we think of any other examples over here? We're getting, we're getting these Okay, the regular meaning of over, like my right hand is over my left hand, so that's over. But slowly, steadily, with each example, we're, we're feeling more confident, we're feeling more certain that we will use some vocabulary correctly. All right? Now, let's see, take a look. Anything else you can think of here? Some common examples. You might be, let's say I'm, uh, I'm kind of worrying about something. I have a date uh, like a, an important date with some new lovely girl that I met at work uh, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I don't know, like, what if she doesn't like me? What if uh, she she's worried, like, I have a, you know, like a funny thing on my face or what if I say something stupid or what if something like that? What would we call this? So a native would call this what? So I'm worried a lot. I'm, I'm kind of doing more than I should. Very good. Overthink, to overthink, yes. So you can say you were thinking too much about this, you're overthinking, you're overthinking, all right? Is this making sense? So each time as we're learning the vocabulary, the point is not to just repeat this over and over and over again, all right? Over and over, I like to use the word over. See, you're getting over in many different ways in this video as well, naturally. This is why it's naturally varied review. What you do not want to do is just repeat the same thing over and over again. Okay, class, today we're going to learn oversleep. It means to sleep longer than you should, and we're going to now repeat together. Oversleep, oversleep, oversleep. But you begin to have questions in your mind, like what does that really mean, and how can we use that in other situations? And so when you get naturally varied review, it's giving you the answers to those questions. And as you get those answers, this is how you develop certainty and so you communicate confidently. Most people don't speak even though they know a lot of English because they just don't feel confident enough about their pronunciation or the grammar or the vocabulary, but this solves all of that, all right? And so you didn't need to have a live teacher there even if you're watching this video a year later from when we record it, uh, or you don't need to have <coughs> someone right there with you to practice anything. The practice is the naturally varied review. Does that make sense? Hopefully this is, this is exciting to you because it means you can really get fluent anywhere as long as you're getting this information.
All right, I'll give you another one a little bit longer than this. We'll have overanalyze, overanalyze. Now this is similar to overthink, but this is typically a more, maybe a more professional use you would hear this, to overanalyze something. So if I'm maybe like a real estate person and I'm uh, exploring some, like I wanna buy a house and I think, well, it could be this or that and I don't know really what's going to happen and I'm trying to think about it too much, I'm overanalyzing the situation. So you want to do all these things, you wanna just basically do the right amount. So I'm here, okay, I wanna analyze it just, just the right amount and not do it too much. So over here, I'm overanalyzing it. I wanna sleep just the right amount, but not too much. I'm oversleeping. I wanna eat just the right amount, but not too much. I'm overeating, okay? And with this, with each example you get, the more confident you feel, all right? Let me know if you feel more confident just understanding these examples, even if you knew these words already, Noticing the connection and discovering the pattern, does that make you feel better and you're more confident about using this particular vocabulary? Let me know. Yes, fantastic. All right, I just want to make sure I'm not talking to myself here. So this is how I got fluent in Japanese. All right, it's not about getting some tactical vocabulary or pronunciation, something like that. Because when you look at this strategically, you're getting the pronunciation, the grammar, the vocabulary, and you're learning to connect all these things and understand them fluently rather than uh, over time. Yep, so you could do something like over time. Over time would be, uh, that would be like a noun, but it's basically the same idea. Very good. So if you're, if you're working, so you're working just amount, like this, this amount of work, let's say you work like nine to five, but if you work more than that, over time. Same idea, all right? All right, sometimes I overthought about my life. Mm. And I know it's not good to be like that, but as a son who doesn't have a father anymore, I uh, passed away sometimes. I felt left behind with someone else. Yep, it's again, we all do these things. We all oversleep, we all overthink, we all over, over plan. Over plan is another one. So when you're thinking about it, tomorrow let's go to the park, and then let's have dinner and then see a movie. That's a good plan, a simple plan. Maybe if something changes, then you can deal with that. You can change the plan. But if you over plan, man, you're, you're saying, okay, at five o'clock, we're going to do this. At 5.04, we're going to do this. At 5.23, we're going to do this. <laughs> you're probably over planning, and the things you want to do will not happen the way you plan. All right, so it's really about balance. You want to just plan or sleep or eat, pay, think, analyze without overdoing those things, to overdo it, all right, in general. Make sure that's fitting. Oh, I don't think, well, maybe I'm not, that's, all right, it's just fitting in there. To overdo, overdo. All right, great examples, best teacher. All right, well, remember, I'm not, the, the goal of my teaching is not, to, it's not to give you more vocabulary, it's for you to own that vocabulary, okay? I want you to own the vocabulary. And this means that you feel confident enough to use it in a conversation rather than like the typical, we're just going to learn it tactically, okay? All right, I really wanna make sure people understand this. I should call this, I don't know, the strategic heart or something like that. <laughs> I need a cool name for it. Uh, and you also learn some Japanese, nebo. <laughs> so you don't need to remember this, but again, the basic idea is that we're trying to learn uh, patterns. And once you, when you learn the pattern, you don't, you, don't, you don't get a pattern from one example or repeating that word or phrase again and again. You have to get naturally varied review, okay? So you need both of those things if you want to build a vocabulary strategically so you can speak without thinking or translating. All right, well, that was it for me, just having a very quick lesson. I wanted to do that live. People enjoyed the, uh, the video that, or the 
uh, the mail I sent, which was talking about this same stuff. Uh, but if people have any questions, I'm, I'm here for a little bit and I can answer them for you. Uh, so yes, that's me. I don't feel confident speaking English, all right? So yes, uh, most students, they, they feel they're not confident when speaking English, but they don't really understand why. So they're confused. Okay, I've been uh, studying English for many years. So what's happening, most people, it's, it's like kind of planting, planting uh, seeds. I've talked about this before. So each new word or phrase that you get is like a small seed. Here's the ground. We're going to put that seed in the ground. So we take the vocabulary. You put the seed in the ground. Uh, overestimate, another great example. Uh, and so we're going to put all these seeds in here. So each time you learn a new word or phrase, you put a, a, uh, a seed in the ground, a seed in the ground, a seed in the ground. And if you don't come back and water and fertilize and give the sunlight to all these things, each one of these seeds will die. So this is why it's, it's almost like watching a, like a cartoon where you have like one character, like uh, someone is like planting seeds and then like a little bird comes behind them and eats all the seeds. I know this sounds a little bit funny, but the basic idea is that people don't spend enough time reviewing the vocabulary they get. Now, the reason people don't review vocabulary is because it's so boring. <laughs> and the reason it's boring is because basically people are learning vocabulary tactically. They're learning by repeating the same exact phrase over and over and over. And you might get a few examples of it, which is great, but the more examples you get that are really building your understanding of the pattern, so the usage of it, the vocabulary. Uh, we've got the grammar if it's in a, a larger sentence, and we've also got the pronunciation and listening. So you're hearing me give you some examples or someone else give you examples as well, and it builds your fluency and confidence automatically because it's making you feel much more confident about what you're learning, all right? So this same basic idea, the reason people don't feel confident is because they don't review, and they don't review because it's boring. All right. So in order to not make it boring, uh, and this is just a bit of brain psychology, brain design, uh, but your brain likes new information. This is why you see lots of YouTube videos. It's like, here's 10 more words for you to learn. But again, you will, that you will put this, this is your, your mind right here. The 10 new words will go in one ear and out the other. And you will remember maybe one or two of those. And even if you do remember them, you will probably not feel very confident using them. All right. So it's good to get new vocabulary. That's a good thing. But if you forget the vocabulary, you're just wasting your time. All right. Very good question, though. All right. Let's see if we have. Let's see. So thanks. Even though I came in late, I learned a lot in the past from you. I appreciate you also bought lessons in the past. Fantastic. Yeah, if I can help you learn more, if you have specific questions, let me know. That's why I'm here. I drew Fabian Ayer. We talked 2019 over your channel. Oh, yes. How you doing? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Glad to see you're still improving. I bet your English is even better now. Hope you're still improving. Let's see. Uh, great class. Great examples. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I think, yeah, everybody, the meat is overheated. Yeah, another great example. Are you a native English teacher? Do you live, live in Toronto, Canada? <laughs> I am native. Uh, I don't really call myself a teacher. That's not what I do. Teaching is, it's a bit more tactically uh, teaching vocabulary, but I live in Japan, actually, not uh, Canada. I don't, I, I'm from the United States, though. All right. So a lot of people watching uh, for my student while watching your video is a good start today after a piece of bread. <laughs> well, hi from Fukuoka. Well, oh, hello. Y-E. I know Japanese people are very shy. If you're if you're Japanese, I'm sure you are. But Japanese people never put like the, the real name on the on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Good evening from Brazil, from Argentina, Indonesia. All right. Well, it looks like we got through everybody. Well, hi from Chicago. Oh, you're you're in you're in Chicago. That's where I'm from. That's my hometown. Can you become a better speaker with the language you learn than your native language? Uh, I guess it depends on how well you know your native language and how much time you spend learning the new language. So some people, maybe they are born in one country and then they move to a different one. And in that case, then usually they're, they're like the second language that they learn is actually 
their native language, or they'll maybe forget the uh, the specific words or things. Well, Yoko, <laughs> yes, I'm shy. <laughs> and so, yes, they will have uh, those same examples where they they know a lot, or maybe they remember something from their the language they were born using, but they forget it. Uh, but it is possible to become a better speaker. But it, it's really about time. Uh, Time and then learning strategically. So if you, let's say I spent, I don't know, five years uh, learning like the native, the native way, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use uh, Japan as an example. So if I'm in Japan and I'm learning Japanese, I'm born in Japan, I'm, I'm got Japanese all around me for five years, uh, and then I'm going to move to America. Uh, if I can learn this same way, but in English, and even in like a five-year period, I could I could become you know better. And also, I mean, you would you would know different things. You would learn different things. You would be older. Maybe as a younger person, you wouldn't care so much about those things. When you get older, you don't talk about those things anymore. Uh, but in general, it's how you learn. So if you learn tactically, then you're going to struggle when you communicate. It doesn't matter what language it is. But I want to make it clear because anytime I make a video, people will argue with me about, well, natives can do it because they're native. Because they're native. I want to make it very clear what, what it means to be a native speaker of a language. Because some people, almost it's almost like magic, really. People think, well, they're a native speaker and so they can do something and they don't really explain why. But if you look at what natives are doing, the only thing that really makes someone native is how they learn. It's not where they live. So let's say, let's say we're going to talk about what a native is. Uh, so a native is where, where they live. All right. So a native is like if I'm uh, a native person from the United States and I was born in Chicago and I was born and raised speaking English. So you could say, well, Drew lives in, in America. Drew lives in the United States. Drew lives in Chicago. Uh, and then we can also think, well, let's see, uh, like who are his parents? So where, where does he live? Who are his parents? Uh, like what language? So what language am I around all day? So I spend my time in an English environment. Uh, and maybe we might have, let's see. So what, like, how am I learning? Now I'm putting these examples up here because it's, it's important to understand what it means to be a native. All right? And just follow me with this for a little bit. It's important. <laughs> I'll explain why. All right. So the first thing, when people think, I, I can't get fluent because I don't live in an English-speaking country or whatever the language they want to learn. So where they live, I know people who have been in Japan for like 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and they still can't speak. So these are foreigners who came to Japan. So they live in Japan, and they have been here for years. So they live in Japan. We got that correct. But they still can't speak. All right? So being a native doesn't have anything to do with where you live. All right? It doesn't have anything to do with where you live. So what about who are his parents? I have another friend. Uh, his parents are both Japanese, but he grew up in Brazil. And so he speaks Portuguese and speaks very little Japanese, actually. So who his parents are doesn't make a difference either. All right? It's not an important difference. It's not the, the absolute key to becoming fluent. So it doesn't matter if you're living in an English-speaking country or not. It doesn't matter who your parents are. And then what language you're around. All right? The same thing with the example. I know lots of people who spend many years living in the United States, and they still can't speak. So even though every day they hear more English, they're still struggling to communicate. Lots of people uh, watching this video probably have that experience. Or... Uh, like all the videos I have, you know, people are watching those and they're thinking, I, Drew, I can understand you, but why can't I speak? Drew, I can understand you, but why can't I speak? And really the simple answer is because you've learned tactically, not because you did anything wrong, but this is because how, it's how most people teach. 
And so it doesn't matter what language you're around. So the only real difference, the only thing left, is how they learn. Okay? That's the, that's the only important difference between what makes someone a native and what makes someone a speaker of a second language. Okay? So I learn English, or if I'm, I, I learned English by basically doing this. I learn through stories, understanding like a native, using the context, so understanding the vocabulary. I'll hear something the first time, and at, the, at first, maybe I don't remember it so easily. Maybe I think, uh, what was that word? I, I don't really remember it. Uh, but when I hear it again and again, I get that naturally varied review. I'm building my fluency and my speaking confidence automatically. So I'm hearing my dad say something, my mom says the same thing, maybe my teacher at school says the same thing. It's not because I'm learning tactically. I get the vocabulary or the grammar point or something like that, but it's only through the naturally varied review and the stories and understanding it like a native that I actually become fluent in that vocabulary. So that's the only thing I'm doing. All right. So the belief that a lot of learners have about needing to be in an English speaking country or they need to uh, have English speaking parents or friends or somebody like that that's standing around them all the time speaking English, it's not necessary. The only thing you need to have is this. You need to make sure you're understanding like a native and then reviewing like a native. All right. That's that's it. If you do these things, then you basically become native. It doesn't matter where you live. If you're learning like that, if you understand like a native and you speak like a native, then you're basically native. I mean, people might say, well, you know, that guy, he looks Japanese or he looks, you know, whatever, and it, it, it doesn't matter. For, for, the, your, uh, for the purposes of speaking, you are native, okay? So the only thing you need, and this is why you can get fluent anywhere. I could learn Chinese in Africa if I'm understanding like this, all right? So it's not about where I live or who my parents are uh, or what language I'm around. It's, it's basically the way that I'm learning because you could get tactical vocabulary lessons like this all day long. I could teach you a thousand new vocabulary words all day. You could watch videos of me doing that and you would not become a fluent speaker because you don't, you're not just, you're not learning it and understanding it like a native and you're not getting naturally varied review. All right. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, very important, but again, it doesn't matter where you live and this is how you could easily become fluent. This is what I do, this is how I teach. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, let me know, but hopefully that makes sense. What do I think about Brazil? I've never been to uh, Brazil, but I would like to go. I've got many, many learners over there, lots of people asking me about uh, coming to Brazil. <laughs> So I think it would be, I think it would be fun to go down there. Hi from Houston, Texas. Hope you do lives more frequently. Yes, I will uh, probably do. I'll see about doing more lives. But the, if I want to make it clear that you can watch this video of me uh, anytime you want. There's nothing about it being live that's that's mo really more valuable than watching a regular video that I've recorded anytime. And often, even in live videos like this, uh, I, will, I will ramble. <laughs> so I will start talking about something and, and talk about something else and then have to get back on track, to get back on track to what I'm supposed to be talking about. But when I actually take time to make lessons, like the lessons that I have that I've produced for learners, it's all, it's all excellent content. It's all like highly focused and making sure you can understand things without me wasting time talking about other things. So you could probably take this live video, edit it down, you know, take 10 minutes out of the video and it would be an even better video. All right. So yes, even if you, uh, if you like the videos and you enjoy learning this way, you should get Fluent for Life. Now, since I just uh, started this live video, I don't have a link or anything up on it yet, but if you go to EnglishAnyone.com, you can learn more about that. There is a link for Fluent for Life, and it basically teaches you like this. Uh, 
So it doesn't matter where you live. If you learned and you understood and you felt more confident getting these kinds of examples, then you actually proved to yourself that you can become a fluent speaker without having a live lesson, without having a person there to practice with. This is the practice. The learning is the practice. Okay? So you don't, you don't need to learn something. People, people get confused about needing a speaking practice partner because tactical language learning is, is awful <laughs> for helping you build fluency. So because you're not learning and remembering very well, you think you need to go out and practice with people to, to develop the vocabulary. But if you don't understand what you're learning, then you can't use it and you don't feel confident about speaking anyway. So it's a really weird, uh, I don't know, we'll just call this, I don't have a good name for this, but basically you, you learn So you learn badly, and by learning badly, I just mean you don't understand something. And this is not you, it's just people teaching that don't actually know how to help you build fluency. So because you learn badly, you feel unconfident. And then this cycle just continues. And so you think, okay, I'm gonna keep learning more that hopefully I feel more confident, but you don't actually feel more confident, all right? So this is the typical tactical learning way of learning badly and then feeling unconfident about what you learn. So lots of people learn this way and so they think, okay, I need to speak. I need to find a speaking practice partner and that's how I will improve. But it doesn't actually work that way and you can force yourself to do that. It's going to feel quite uncomfortable for most people, but it's so much easier it's like, this is like swimming up a waterfall. It's really difficult to do. And most people feel very uncomfortable about doing it because they don't feel confident about the vocabulary that they know. So it's much easier to simply get this. You learn strategically. You hear the stories, you get the understanding like a native so that you feel like a native and you start thinking, ah, okay, I'm getting it. But you can't just hear something one time. You have to hear it again and again it's really going to develop your listening, your grammar, your pronunciation, but it will do all of those things automatically. Now, I'm so excited about this way of teaching because it's what got me fluent in Japanese. And this is the, the reason I'm, uh, I'm able to, to communicate now with people is because I, I stopped learning tactically and started thinking about it strategically. All right? Now, actually, in this room, in a few hours, I'm going to be meeting the mayor of Nagasaki and talking about all in Japanese, uh, like YouTube and other things like that. Uh, but it's because I, I started learning this way. Without this, I'm, I'm like a horrible teacher because <laughs> I'm just giving you more tactical information. Now, from a, like a business perspective, if I just want to make more content on YouTube, this is part of the reason I don't, I don't put so much content on YouTube. I could probably, I could make lots more lessons that, that are just like, okay, here's vocabulary and we're going to do this and this. But really, like the lessons are already done. The, the, the whole system is already finished. It's fluent for life. And so when I come on to do live videos, I love to give more examples just to prove that you really can become a more fluent speaker all by yourself. So you don't need to have a speaking practice partner. The goal really is instead of having this is to learn well. So learning well, you're learning strategically, you understand like a native, so you feel confident, all right? So you learn well, you feel good, and as you learn more, you think, wow, I actually understand what's happening, and I feel really confident about using the language now, and then you go out and speak, all right? So speaking, speaking is the result. Now, what the, probably the most exciting thing for me when I, when I discovered this for myself, I discovered this watching uh, Japanese kids learn English, or learn Japanese, excuse me. <laughs> so watching Japanese kids learn Japanese, it said, oh wow, like this is what they're doing. They're not, they're not doing this. They're not learning vocabulary tactically. And if they do learn something like this, like little kids will learn new words all the time, but then forget them. But if you're learning strategically, 
then wow, you think, ah, I actually understood that. I'm starting to, to build more uh, speaking confidence and that's how you actually start using the vocabulary you know. So I, I see it with my own children. When they don't feel confident, I can see it in their face. So they come up to me and they say, Daddy, and they want to say something. And I say, okay, take your time. What, what do you want to say? And then I kind of help them, like, again, I'm giving them that naturally varied review. I want to give them more examples of something so they say it well and so they feel confident. And then the next time they come back, because they've heard me say something a few times already, they feel more confident about using it. So you can try to speak and you will, you will feel uncomfortable, especially as an adult trying to speak. So it's, a, it's like a different thing. We have an expectation with children that they're going to make mistakes and they, they do actually feel nervous about doing that. Uh, I have two daughters, so a, uh, a three-year-old and a uh, seven-year-old. Uh, if you look on my, maybe on, if you go to my Instagram page, so that's uh, in uh, English anyone also, you will find uh, pictures of both of them. Uh, but I think Noelle, my younger daughter, has not been in a video on YouTube. But Aria was asking me, uh, she wanted to be in a video. <laughs> she said, can I be in a video? And I said, okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll think of something. If you have any questions for Aria or you have a, uh, an example or something you want to hear, let me know. But this is it. So uh, the, the vocabulary that you need and like having me, like if you wanted to have me right there, as a, like a person like, hey, I'm going to be your, your, your tutor, your private coach, uh, whenever you wanna learn. So you wake up in the middle of the night and you wanna learn about whatever, that's what this is. So it gives you all of the examples and all the things you need to learn. Uh, and again, you don't need a live lesson in order to do that. The point is just to get the input. If I teach well, then that's actually how you become fluent. Yes, so the program is called Fluent for Life because the whole point of it is to actually make you fluent for your life. Uh, you really want to be able to communicate confidently, whether it's professionally and especially people who communicate professionally. Uh, like I've seen that in you know, people trying to do business with, with English, anyone. Uh, I see you know, mistakes and things in people's emails and I think these people are not professional. And so those kinds of things, especially People think about learning uh, business English in a tactical way and they learn a bunch of business expressions, but most of the time, even in professional situations, it's really just the casual communication and uh, people will get all kinds of lessons about, uh, uh oh, we're getting some kind of such and such over here. Let's see, put user in timeout. Oh my goodness. Anyway, pardon that intrusion. Uh, so the, when you're thinking about how to get fluent, this is it. And if you want to be able to communicate confidently and automatically, whether it's casual or professional situation, you're still going to get a mix of lots of different conversation topics. So I often hear from uh, people, they are maybe in a business meeting or something, but someone will ask them about their kids or their hobbies or some sports things that have nothing to do with the business. And this is because people are talking with people. It doesn't matter where you're doing that, all right? So this is why I created Fluent for Life. If you have any questions about the program or there's anything uh, you'd like to know about it or anything that's stopping you from joining the program, I would love to hear it and answer those questions for you. All right, so uh, awesome, Andrew. I remember when Ari was born many years ago. Yep, yep. Yeah, I did a, uh, I think I did a video about that. Oh my goodness, another, another uh, fire truck <laughs> or ambulance or whatever. Uh, especially when immigrants live in their community in foreign country, they talk in their language more than English. Yep, so again, if you spend time, even, even the people who spend time around natives will often, uh, they don't really feel confident communicating because they don't actually feel confident about the vocabulary they know. So they don't feel confident about pronunciation or vocabulary or grammar or whatever that thing is. So if they don't feel confident, of course, they won't use that thing correctly. All right, so please save this live. Yes, I'm happy to save the live for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, I got your point. Sometimes people live in, oh, okay, okay. Greetings from Taiwan. Nice to see you there. Wow, you got a Taiwan, but it looks like, is that, was that Arabic in, that, in the writing or Thai? Interesting. All right, well, hopefully, 
People got this. If you have any questions for me, I'm going to leave it open for a few more minutes to see if anybody has any questions. But if not, if I've answered everything and now everyone feels much more confident, then I've done my job and hopefully you will continue and continue to learn strategically like this rather than learning tactically. And I guess I will make maybe some more live videos. We'll see. I enjoy talking with people live, but you notice I repeat myself. I'm giving lots of the same examples even though I try to use different vocabulary each time, but really the point is to get you thinking like a native and to prove that you really can become a native if you learn like a native, all right? It's really that simple. So if you don't learn like a native, of course, you're going to have trouble speaking. Uh, hello, what do you think about polyglots, says Ario. What do I think about polyglots? That's great. If you can speak many languages, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be cool for me to speak multiple languages. Uh, I don't, I don't, spend time learning more than Japanese and even English. I'm continuing to learn more new English all the time. Uh, but I don't try to do that because uh, the biggest reason is I'm spending most of my time figuring out how to help you learn English. So I'd rather, like if I died in 20 years or 30 years or whatever, uh, and I didn't learn another language, but I helped the whole planet learn my language, I'd be very happy about that. So I don't, I don't care as much. It would be cool to learn other languages, but really I'm just focusing on helping people learn English. Uh, do you know a website to study English online? Yes, I do. I'll give you a very quick one, English. <laughs> Englishanyone.com. So this is my website, obviously, uh, but the point of the website is not to help you study English. I don't want to help you study English. I want to help you understand English like a native. And what's so amazing about learning strategically, just like we proved in this video, uh, is that you don't need to do anything in order to improve your speaking. It's my job to help you become more confident and fluent. And so even if you don't say anything, if you get lots of examples, you will feel more confident. And the next time you get into a conversation, you will feel a lot more confident about using the vocabulary you learn. So a lot of people do not, you know, they don't want to go to the gym because they don't want to exercise and it's tiring and it's boring to lift weights and do that kind of thing. So with, with Fluent for Life, with this strategic way of learning, it's like me coming to the gym with you and I lift the weight for you. <laughs> and you just sit back and like, and you get bigger. I know that sounds impossible, but really, the point is, in this video, right here, today, you didn't say anything to me, but you became more fluent if you were following me for the whole video, okay? So people are, you know, they will, they will learn tactically and still be thinking about uh, how to find a practice partner, but those things are not necessary. You don't need to learn tactically. You don't need a speaking practice partner, and you really don't need to spend a lot of time learning. It's about focusing on particular things, learning them well, getting the review that you need for the particular things that you focus on, rather than trying to build a really big vocabulary. So I know many people who know lots of words, even people who know, I know Japanese people who know more English words than I know uh, like Japanese. And so when I, when I see people like that, I think, wow, like you know a lot of vocabulary, but why can't you speak English the way I speak Japanese? And the difference is like they have kind of a like a like a wide, a wide but very shallow understanding. I have more of like a narrow but very deep understanding. And this enables me to communicate very well uh, with lots of people. You know, it doesn't matter what the situation is, but because I'm prepared, I know the information so well because of how I learned it. All right, looks like a few more comments came in. Let's see what we got here. Uh, really interested in the program on how to prepare to get through the job interview. Really interested in the program on how to get prepared for a job interview. Uh, tactically speaking, like there will be information about asking questions and things like that. But if I were trying to get a job, if I made a job interview program, it might have a little bit of that, you know, vocabulary questions or things. But the, the better thing to do is to think strategically. Again, you want to think big picture. How can I go to the company, find out what their problems are, I actually did a, a, a video on Instagram. I don't remember what video it is, but uh, so in Instagram, it's the same name as this one on YouTube, English, anyone. 
Uh, but I talked with a woman who was trying to get a job and kind of coaching her a little bit about getting a job with a company. And the important thing, like English is, is obviously important. You have to be able to communicate. But even more than that is how can you help the company do what it wants to do? So if someone sends me a letter and they're saying, Drew, can you give me a job doing something? Now you're asking me to think about you and how I can help you do something when, like most people, I mean, they just don't care. They're focusing on what they want to do. So if you go to a company and you say, hey, I noticed that you have this issue and I'm very good with that. Can I help you fix that thing? Then you have a much greater chance rather than trying to go through a, a typical interview process about getting a job. So I don't know what your specific situation is, but for many people, uh, they would be better suited by trying to figure out what the company really needs. Uh, and even if it's just for that particular job position, you would want to think about uh, how can I help the company, not like what can the company do for me. All right? And that's just a basic selling proposition for, for getting them to listen to you. All right, uh, let's see, presentations, practice, and production. So we have uh, Influent for Life. We have lesson sets all about business situations, business communications, including a whole lesson set on giving presentations better uh, if you're interested in that. Good luck, everyone. Best wishes on your language improvement. Very good. Really interested in the program on how to prepare. Okay. Uh, what do you think OPPP? I don't know what that, what that means. Uh, if you're not a good conversation person in your native language because introversion, for instance, you can become eloquent can you become eloquent? Oh, that's a question. Okay. Can you become eloquent in another language? Uh, you can. I think it's possible. Obviously, uh, the better speaker you become, the more you, it's interesting, you, you develop almost a, a, a slightly different personality. So you might feel, also because of various reasons, maybe you think, uh, I'm kind of intimidated in my own country, but if you go someplace else, maybe you feel a little bit more confident. So just because your language is, is the native one and you're learning a different language, that doesn't mean uh, that you would necessarily, you have to feel more confident in that language. So some people do. You could be introverted in one language for whatever reason, or maybe it's, it's more social than about the language, like you feel nervous about the people. Um, so like for me, I was, I was not, I was maybe shy when I was younger. I, mean, I became less shy as I became older. Uh, but the, when I, when I came to Japan and I couldn't speak, my, my shyness was really like, I, I actually can't communicate with people. And I felt bad about that. And it took me a long time to figure out how to communicate because I would, I remember, uh, <laughs> thought about telling this story. Uh, so when I first came to Japan, I, I couldn't speak any Japanese at all. I knew a few words, but I couldn't have any kind of communication, any conversation with people. And I certainly didn't understand what people were saying to me. So I would avoid conversations. And <laughs> I remember one time I was working at a, uh, at a school teaching and we had to go to a meeting uh, at the other end of town. And my... Usually I would ride my bicycle, but I, I don't know, I think my bike was broken or I had a flat tire or something like that. I couldn't ride it for whatever reason. And I was too shy and too scared to get a, like to get on a bus. So I couldn't read the Japanese characters. I, I was by myself. I didn't know how, like what bus to take. And I couldn't ask the driver because I was too nervous. <laughs> Uh, and I couldn't get in a taxi either because I was just, I was too nervous about talking to the taxi driver. And I know these seem like uh, kind of silly things, but in that in that case, I walked all the way to this hotel where we were having a meeting, and I had my suit on, and it was in the summer in Japan, which is really <laughs> really hot and humid. And I was I was I was so sweaty by the time I got to this meeting, I was just sitting there uncomfortably for the whole meeting. And it's embarrassing to think about it now, but that's like, it's just, yeah, just ask the driver, you know? But again, if you don't feel confident about something, then you're, you're going to have situations like that where you can't communicate and you worry about what people are going to think about you. And it, it doesn't matter if these things are true or not. Like, I don't think the bus driver would really care. He would just say, oh, like, you know, take this bus. Or he might even try to say something in English if I, if I look sad enough, I guess. But the, uh, in general, if you're learning like a, like a native, 
all of those worries and those kinds of situations go away. So I don't have any problems like that anymore in Japan. And I go anywhere I want to and can speak with anybody I want to. And this doesn't mean I know every word of the language. It's just that, like this example again, the vocabulary that I do know, I know it very well and I can understand and I can make jokes and do things like that that, that I really wanted to do when I came to Japan. But the point is I can speak and I have more confidence than most people who are learning a language like English, so Japanese people who are learning the language, uh, but they don't actually feel confident about speaking. All right? All right. Oh my God, I understand all you say right now. <laughs> yeah, so you will build a, a really good passive vocabulary by just getting lots of English input, but if you want to speak, you have to learn like this. All right, do you think it's, oh, I think maybe we answered that question already. So do you think it's possible to become fluent and eloquent equivalent to your native language. I, I mean, it depends on how old you are and, and what, what things you're learning. You can learn to speak well. It wouldn't be about everything, though. So again, in my case, I can speak well about some things, other things that I don't know at all about. Like if I'm going to talk to a scientist in Japanese about something, there will be a lot of vocabulary that I'm just not prepared for. So I would have to ask questions or try to uh, explain things in, in different ways using the vocabulary I know. But this is the same way that children get fluent. So remember that they're building their vocabulary a little bit at a time. So today in this video we reviewed the word over and in specific ways uh, that natives are using it so we talk about doing something more than you want to or more than you should. And instead of learning through studying vocabulary uh, like definitions or translations, we want to understand the vocabulary like this. So we're getting stories, so we understand things like a native, and then we're getting, say it with me, say it with me, the naturally varied review, naturally varied review. Congratulations on nailing down the most difficult language, Japanese. I'm not aware that Japanese is the most difficult language. Is that true? I don't think it is. Now, I, I've heard people say that there are uh, different, different, like different, some languages, it can kind of rank them as what is the most difficult language. But if, if there is one language that's more difficult than others, why do the native children all learn to speak at, at about the same rate? So if you're, you could be like a native, like Chinese kid or a Japanese or English or, you know, whatever the language is, and they all learn to speak at, a, at about the same rate. So it's, it's not like Japanese kids, they don't learn to speak until they're 10 years old. I mean, they start speaking at like one, two years old. Chinese kids, one, two years old. English kids, one, two, one, two. So people have all these uh, beliefs about language learning because they're learning tactically. And because almost everyone, I'd say 99%, probably more than that, 99.999% of people are learning or teaching tactically. All right? And so when you learn this way, then you, you develop these ideas of like, well, this language is much more difficult than that one. It's like, why? There's, there's no logical reason for that. Now, I would believe that if, again, uh, some kids, it takes them longer to get fluent, but I've never experienced that. Does anyone have an example of that? Of like, if, if, tell me about your language and how long it takes young kids to start speaking. Is it 10 years or is it like two years? Something like that. So for pretty much like all the experience I've had with language learning, language teaching, watching other little kids, meeting kids from different cultures that speak different languages, they're basically all around the same time. Isn't that funny? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's basically they learn how to speak. And why is that? We, we covered that earlier in the video, but I really want to make it clear. To say that they get fluent because they're native doesn't make any sense. That's like saying they get fluent because they have two legs. Well, I got fluent because I have two legs. You would think, well, that's what does that mean? And it's like, okay, what does it mean to say you're native? It doesn't mean anything. To say you're native, it means you're learning like this. This is what it really means. Okay? So you don't, like, you're, you're not native because you're born there. I could be born, if my parents taught me like this, I would be a, a way worse uh, a way worse speaker. All right? So how I learn is the most important thing. And the reason this is so exciting, I get excited about this, the reason it's exciting is because you can do it anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. 
All right. Let's see. All right. So if you learn secretly a language for a long time, can people around you feel you're smarter than you really show? I suppose. <laughs> if you're secretly learning anything. If I teach myself to play piano uh, and people don't know it, and then I, I sit down at a, at a piano and people think I can't play, and then I start playing, that's certainly impressive. People would say, wow, I didn't know you could play the piano. I didn't know you could speak Turkish or Chinese or whatever. I didn't know you could do that. Well, all right, I'm starting to lose my voice. So if we don't have any more questions, I will shut it down. But thank you very much for joining me today. Hopefully I have convinced you. Let me know, has this been helpful for you? Please let me know if it has. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I, this, is, this is the one lesson that I've been teaching for basically 20 years. <laughs> to people in person, to people online, anywhere. If, if I can get them to understand this, then they can get fluent. All right, let's see. So let's see, Yoko says, I started learning Italian in my 30s and became fluent two years, including my three months stay in Italy, but I'm forgetting it as I don't use it lately. Yeah, so that will happen to people as well. If you don't use the language, uh, you will likely, you know, you will, you will forget it. Like me, if I haven't, I haven't driven a car in a while. So when I started learning to drive again here in Japan, it took me a while to get used to it. Plus I was on the other side of the road. <laughs> And even now, I don't drive very often. So when I do drive, I, I have to like learn how to do it all over again. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, but with most skills are like that, and you can you can easily get back to that. So get up to that level again if you start using it. But very good. So again, if you're learning the language the right way, you can learn it very quickly, and you have advantages that children do not. So being able to learn a language. Uh, being able to focus on something and to learn, to have the patience, to be able to ask questions and get the review you need for the things you want to learn for your life rather than something else that maybe you don't care about. So often children, they will learn things or hear vocabulary, but most people are not expert teachers of language and they, they just say things to kids. They try to be simple about those explanations, but often kids don't understand. <laughs> So little kids, if you, if you communicate with them well, if you make the language understandable, again, very simple, make it understandable, not trying to give them rules and things to study. This is, this is, it's basically learning the opposite of what you should be doing. All right. Could someone please provide a summary I just got here? <laughs> All right. That's actually, that's probably a good, a good thing to end on here. Uh, let's see. I tip my hat to you. Thanks as always. Could some please provide a summary I just got here? I might have to watch again later. Yes, Rose, it's okay. It's a recorded video as well, so you can go back and watch this live video. But the basic idea, if I can make this very simple, uh, tactical learning, what you will find in most YouTube videos is you're getting some kind of vocabulary. You will get a definition, a translation, maybe some examples. Okay, we're going to practice saying the word or phrase, and then they move on to the next one. So one video, uh, let's see if I, this fits over here. So you have one video, let's just say this is a video, the word one, two, three, four, five, six. So today we're going to learn six phrases or six words or whatever, and then that's the end of the video. You don't get any review, all right? So you're learning it, usually you will get, again, the definition or translation, or they will give you maybe a story sometimes. Uh, but often it's just the, the point of these videos is because they get views, all right? And you're going to learn some vocabulary, but you will forget most of it. So if you learn one thing in different ways, like we practiced in this video, you're more likely to remember and then feel confident about using that vocabulary, all right? So this is learning tactically, where you're just trying to build your vocabulary by learning a lot. Okay, I'm gonna sit in the library and study for four hours. I'm going to watch 100 videos on YouTube. And most of this, you will forget most of this. You will remember maybe the last word. Maybe the last word you will remember. And if you remember it, you probably can't use it fluently because you're only getting one, one real example of that thing. And it's not building your pattern recognition and helping you understand like a native. And that's what we wanna do instead, which is learning strategically. So learning tactically means you're just getting vocabulary or a grammar point or pronunciation or something, 
but you're not really thinking about it strategically. The, the way natives learn, the vocabulary, the, uh, the pronunciation, the listening, the grammar, all of that is in, it's in the same way of learning. You don't have like a separate vocabulary lesson because you can't have vocabulary without grammar and pronunciation and listening. It's all connected as, as one thing, all right? So instead of trying to get, okay, here's our vocabulary lesson, we're gonna watch 10 videos, and, and your mind tells you to learn this way, all right? So your mind is always thinking about what's new, and I, I don't need to go into why that is, but I've talked about that in previous videos. Uh, about basically your mind tricks you uh, into, into learning this way so you're always looking for something new. Uh, but instead, you should be looking for new ways, new ways to understand the vocabulary you already know. All right, does that make sense? So, I mean, let me make this very clear because I really want people to understand this lesson, very important. This is again how I became fluent in Japanese. This is how I help people get fluent in English rather than learning tactically. So you can learn, you know, a whole bunch of words like this. And each time, so I'm gonna spend, this is one video, where I'm gonna learn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words, or phrases, or whatever. And each one of these things, I learn it, you know, just a little bit. But there's no review. After the video finishes, I will forget most of it. So this is the the tactical way of learning right here. Now the strategic way of learning, which we'll put over here, the strategic way of learning is really to take one thing and we're gonna cover it deeply like that. Now people think, well, I wanna learn more than that. Well, you are. You're learning all these different ways of expressing something like that. Now the, the naturally varied review for uh, vocabulary, where you're switching the vocabulary up, that's one way to do it, or it could be with the pronunciation or it could be with the, the listening, which is connected with that. So we might have different speakers saying the same thing. You might have different speeds. You might have lessons uh, or vocabulary review at different times. So you might have like, I go to the park and then I went to the park, all right? And so when you learn this way, you feel very confident. Your confidence increases as you get more and more review. Your confidence increases as you get more and more review. Your confidence, your confidence isn't going anywhere. Your, your confidence actually goes down when you learn this way. Because you're like, wait a minute, I just learned that, but then I forgot the word. All right? So you're learning this way, and your confidence goes down, and now you don't want to speak. So even though you, you know a lot, and you're really building a passive vocabulary that you can't use fluently, you need to take time with vocabulary like that. So what I did when I'm developing this idea about naturally varied review, this is how natives get fluent already, but all I'm doing is making it systematic. So a native, maybe they're like two years old and they would hear some word, then they're three years old, they hear the word again. It's a slower process for natives. But if you can take this and then like boom, 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 we're going to give you all these examples at the same time, then you really feel confident very quickly and you can use that vocabulary almost instantly. All right, so this is why we do naturally varied review. The first time you learn something, this is where we're getting stories to try to understand something like a native. But even natives, when they hear something one time, they're likely to forget that, all right? So this is why even learning like a native, we gotta have this part too. You need both. But the exciting thing about this is that you don't need to have a person to speak with to get the review. The review doesn't come from you repeating phrases to yourself in your car or to your bathroom mirror uh, or in a conversation with people. What's really helping you is getting this input. And each step, you're building, uh, you're building your fluency automatically. All right? Eduardo says, I'm alive. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Happy to be here. All right, let's see here. Does So review is the secret. Yes. It's really, it's both of these things, all right? Let me, let me make it clear why it's both of these things. It's not like just review is the secret, and this is the, the tricky thing about it. The, 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 the whole idea of this is that you must understand English like a native. I'll, I'll just write this here for you. So this is the secret. You must. You 
You must understand like a native. Okay? That's it. So this process, the strategic way of learning is helping you understand English like a native. Because when you understand English like a native, you speak without thinking or translating. Okay? So this is the secret. Now, the reason it's, it's both of these things, it's very important because if you just get like review, if you, if you just repeat something again and again, just review by itself. So we only get, we'll just focus on this word review. People think review means I'm going to look at that same word or hear it again and again and again and again. But your brain doesn't like learning that way. It's, and that's why it becomes boring to people to learn in most lessons because they're just getting something again and again. You've got to have it differently to keep your mind excited about learning. So if you only hear the same word or phrase again and again, your brain, you start thinking about what's for dinner, what am I going to do on vacation, and stuff like that. So it's the naturally varied review. You take something and you hear it in different ways. You get to experience it in different ways, and that builds your fluency automatically. Even if you don't speak, okay? This, isn't that cool? Don't, don't you think that's awesome? I, maybe I'm the only one. Am I the only one who thinks it's awesome that you can get fluent without speaking? I know it sounds so unbelievable. People think, well, you have to speak. It's like, well, you, you start using the language, but after you feel comfortable because you understand the language. So you can become more fluent without speaking. Okay? Oh, no. So everybody coming late. <laughs> I love watching TED Talk videos. Yeah, it's, uh, again, you can, you, can, you can learn lots of things without you having to speak and, and do, the, do the work of, of this. Like, this is really boring. That's why it's so difficult for people to, uh, to get fluent learning that way. The learning method itself is very frustrating. It's not natural. It's not how you would learn normally. It's not how you got fluent in your native language. And this is, again, uh, it's important to understand the language this way. And it's the naturally varied review with understanding like a native. All right. Let me see if I have answered these couple of questions over here. Writing on a journal or essays and without a dictionary. Yeah, so you can, you can use a dictionary. I mean, a dictionary is okay just to understand something. But you will usually forget vocabulary if you don't get the review. So the review is even more important. This is really just the first time you hear something. So you get, the, you get a story or you see something, it's like if I like teach my daughters about, about heat, or I wanna tell my daughters what an apple tastes like. I can try to describe an apple, or I can just say, here, bite an apple, and you can you know, you understand what the flavor of an apple is by just tasting it yourself. This is how you get the, the learning, the, the natural, direct experience of the language. But you will forget if you don't get the review. And you have to get the review this way, uh, because if you don't get it this way, your mind will be bored learning that way. So how can I make, how can I make review? All right, so there are two ways to do this about uh, how to get the review that you need. Would anybody else like to learn about that? Let me know in the comments if you wanna know how to review the right way. All right, let's see, I love your accent, clear and natural. Yes, I'm trying to speak clearly so people can understand what I'm saying. All right, could you please tell me about the lesson I'm just going? Do you think the impersonate the way someone speak is important in becoming fluent? Ah, you mean like copying somebody? You can certainly learn. Again, that's, it's just another example of naturally varied review. So I've, I've told people, uh, like if you want to learn more about the news and how people communicate in the news, like watch one day. Just watch the news all day about one topic. And you will learn very quickly about how to talk about, you know, actually quite a few things because you're seeing lots of different people talking about the same thing. There's usually one or two main news stories in a day, and then the, this, you will hear different people talking about that. Or, as your example, if you want to maybe copy, try to impersonate someone, that's another good example or a way to talk about that. So if I want to sound like a, I don't know, like a Japanese samurai, or you know, like a little kid or something, I can try to mimic the way they sound but it's getting the naturally varied review that will prepare me uh, not only to listen, so I want to be able to understand. It's not communication isn't just about me. I want to hear lots of examples of many different people uh, saying something. 
So they're going to describe a situation. I talked about this, I think, uh, in last week's video about uh, like one way you would get review for this. Uh, and so I would go to a coffee shop and just sit at the coffee shop and pretend like I'm reading a book, but I'm actually just listening to all these people. Uh, and they're saying, let's see. So I'm listening to all these people uh, and they're, they're saying like kind of general ideas about ordering food. So one person might say, may I have something? Another person might say, uh, can I have this or whatever, or I'd like to order or something like that. And so I'm getting all of these different, I understand what the situation is. The situation is understanding uh, or ordering something at a cafe. So pretty simple, I understand what's happening. And instead of trying to get vocabulary and, and just review these things, I'm getting the naturally varied review that's automatically teaching me how people speak. This is how you got fluent in your native language. All right, you weren't doing anything else. This is, this is it. You didn't get fluent because your parents are native. You got fluent because your parents taught you this way. All right, it's really important to understand this because if you don't understand this, you will think, well, native, native means it's like a special person. I'm not, I'm not a native, I just learned in a native way, all right? And so anybody can do what I did. I'm not a native, like we just, we say that like, oh, that person is a native. But what they really mean is that they learned like this. And so you don't have to learn like a traditional student, like most people do, you can actually get fluent the same way natives do, and you don't need to have a live teacher or a practice partner to do that, all right? <clears throat> Let's see, so where are you from? I'm from Chicago in the United States. All right, if we have anybody else uh, challenging and I'm starting to learn French too. Let's see. All right, so I'll make this, uh, I'll put an end to this video, but again, the secret is understanding like a native and you don't need to be a native to understand like one. So to get this review, you can either do it by yourself, like I did to get fluent. It took me a bit longer than having somebody uh, with me and actually you know, being able to, I would love to have had uh, someone, someone be there like teaching me and actually explaining me things like in this way. So making sure that I understood like a native and got naturally varied review. So I had to, I had to develop this system to understand what people are doing and then do it myself which took a long time. So what I did was I created a program called Fluent for Life that does this for you. So all the learning, all the lessons, it's all prepared. Everything is just waiting for you. You choose the particular topics you're interested in and that's how you can start speaking. So you get learning and understanding like a native and then you get naturally varied review. It's really that simple. So you can do this again by yourself. Maybe you go, like I just gave that example about going to a cafe and learning uh, how other people are, are asking or ordering for food. Or I can do, again, get someone to just like do it very systematically and give me that, uh, give me that result uh, much faster. Do I speak Portuguese? No, I do not. I speak only uh, English and Japanese. <clears throat> All right, let's see. So you should be a native speaker. Well, I, I, I wanna make it clear what a native speaker is. <laughs> a native speaker is just someone who learned like this. All right, so that, that makes you a native speaker if you learn like that, okay? But in, in a conversational way, like a Japanese person who speaks really well, like I wouldn't call them a native speaker, but they basically are. So I put that word basically meaning, yeah, like they might as well be native, all right? Thanks so much for going over on this topic again. Yes, all right? Remember, it's, again, I'm, the, this video is also an example of this learning. <laughs> So I don't want to give you like a list of things that I'm saying. I want to explain things to you with stories and help you understand. And then I want to help you review that again and again, because I know you will forget it if you, if you don't review. But you need to hear the lesson in different ways. Okay? All right, thank you. So may you teach process again because I was late. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, a week in your course got uh, 1.5 times more. <laughs> yes, the uh, the price of the yen is is going way down. Uh, Yoko, do you have any any of my programs already? If you if you do not, 
send us send us an email. But you would probably probably like to. Uh, dep- I don't know how your written English is quite good, uh, but I don't know how good your speaking is. If it's like many Japanese people, you probably have maybe some pronunciation uh, issues that you don't like or. You're still thinking in Japanese when you speak in English, but if you do, send us an email and、uh, we can help you more with that. But yes, fluent for life—it's—it's、um, it's not cheap, and for good reason. We spent a lot of time developing that. Most lessons、uh, take about a month to produce for one lesson, and we got lots of people working on it to make sure. Like if you watch this live video, it's me just talking about things, and and we could edit this down and make it a much better lesson if I had time to prepare something. So this is all me just like, you know, talking about things like that.、Um, but the important thing is that like the steps are all done for you. And so for many people, if they've already been struggling for years and years, if you apply this process to some business English that you want to learn or you want to talk about your pets or talk about friends and family or going on dates with people, whatever. If you apply this to that and you learn systematically. Uh, then you oh TOEIC nine oh five okay well I I know lots of people that have a high TOEIC score but they still can't speak so they can they like they've prepared for a test but they、uh, still aren't able to communicate very well so you know I I've never heard you speak before、uh, but again it's it's more about how you、uh, how you think about、uh, about your own ability to speak and whether it's important to you to improve that so for me it was important if I had somebody. Have have like a program like this in Japanese? I would have bought that instantly, because <laughs> I this is the program I I wanted to make for that.、Uh, so is there a link to the method? So again, if you go to、um, just go to EnglishAnyone.com, I will put a link on this video later. I can't do it right now because it's in the middle of a live video. But you're looking for fluent. Fluent for life. So in this video, I really just wanted to explain the the way you're learning. This is not a like a, a fancy or new methodology. This is the way linguists have discovered that people learn languages. This is how everybody gets fluent in their native language. So why not do this for learning a different language? There's no good reason not to. It's like the the typical way that people learn a language. It doesn't work. It helps you learn, but not helps you speak. All right, it doesn't help you speak. And so that's why we want to actually take this. It makes sense. Like we want to model good, good behavior, good results, good action, and then apply that to our learning. So if natives are doing something, we should probably do that too. All right. Let's see if I answered everything. Yes. Thanks for sharing with us. It's my pleasure. Why speaking is the most challenging skill to develop when it comes to learning a new language as an adult? I can get all you say, but struggle to speak. All right. So again, you can understand what I'm saying logically. Intellectually, you're like, yeah, Drew, like this makes sense. And then, again, if you don't actually understand the particular vocabulary and you don't understand it well enough, then of course you're not going to be a very good speaker. All right. So people people are trying to focus on the speaking first. So most people think that fluency works like this: you speak. And then you get fluent. This is what what people think is happening when you're learning languages. You speak, and then you get fluent. It's like a magical thing. How、oh, how did I get fluent from doing that? So you speak and get fluent. What's actually happening? And this is the way you learned your native language. So this is like a student, and then a native over here. A native is understanding first. Understanding leads to confidence. Confidence leads to speech. I'll say that again. Make sure it's clear. Understanding leads to confidence, which leads to speech. Understanding leads to confidence, which leads to speech. If you don't feel confident about something, like your pronunciation or your vocabulary or whatever it is, you will never get to that point where you feel speaking is is something easy that you can do. You will never feel fluent. You will never want to speak. Some people, even if they are, even if they speak incorrectly, they still try to speak. We call that forcing yourself to do it to power through. But it's it's a brute force. It's a high energy way of learning when this is much easier over here. 
So I don't know why, uh, knowing this, people would continue <clears throat> to learn this way. So the goal is still speaking. Like we want, we want to get you to speak, but the, we don't start there. And what's interesting about the brain and the way the brain wants to learn is that you, you actually feel nervous, which stops you from speaking. So if the brain feels like it understands something, if you think, yeah, I, I understood that, I feel confident about that, then you, you just start to speak automatically. Because there's nothing stopping you from speaking. The thing that's stopping you is if you don't understand. So this is why we don't just repeat phrases again and again. So I'm gonna, gonna learn something tactically. Today's vocabulary word is uh, whatever. And I'm going to just practice repeating that over and over. Another ambulance. I hope everybody's okay. I feel bad for Nagasaki. There's a lot of ambulances out today. All right. Hopefully this makes sense. Very important information in this video. So I like to teach, like, teach people strategically so they can use their vocabulary automatically. The goal is not to have a large vocabulary. The goal is to have a large vocabulary that you can use fluently, okay? <laughs> so some people just want to learn more vocabulary so they can understand movies. That's fine. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I help the people who want to speak, and this is how you do it. So if you understand like a native, you will speak like one. And the only thing really stopping people is their belief that they can't do it because they're not a native. But I'm trying to tell you again and again, there's, there's really no such thing as a native person. It's just a person who learns like this <clears throat> or a person who learns like this. All right. My morning starts with your video. Nice. Fantastic. Well, everybody's morning can start with my video as I will be making this uh, recorded so people can watch it again later. I can communicate my British friend uh, well, but sometimes I can't speak confidently. Yeah. And so if you, if you take some time to think about your own learning and your own ability to communicate, you think about what's really stopping me. So I'm in a conversation. I'm feeling nervous. You, you can think about what is the reason behind that. So you just kind of listen to your body for a moment. Am I worried about my pronunciation? Am I worried because I don't, I don't really understand the vocabulary I'm using? Or I'm worried about what they'll think because I'm sounding odd or whatever that is? You can focus on that particular thing. Your body will tell you uh, what your particular issue is. Because it's just what makes you most uncomfortable. <laughs> so when you're in a conversation, oh no, I'm worried about, and how you answer that question. I'm worried about my pronunciation. I'm worried about my grammar or whatever. And it's usually because you didn't learn like this and then review like that. And that's it. It's really, it's one process of understanding like a native. That is, that's the secret. Now I have the, like the number one most viewed, most popular video on YouTube on English fluency. It's got over 19 million views now. And like this, it's the same thing. That's the secret. So I say like, it's, it's, almost, it's almost impossible to, to tell it to people because it's so unbelievable. Most people think because they're not native, they can't learn like a native. And so they just think, all right, I'm, I, can't, I can't do anything, all right? So I have to help people with the belief about that. But really just showing you like I did in this video. So this is live. I will put it, uh, make it available for people to watch. Go back and watch the video. The beginning part of this video is really the, the proof that this works. And so we go over the words over in different ways. All right. So the secret is understanding like a native. And if you'd like to do that and have me systematically do it uh, and show you how to improve, then get fluent for life. It goes over that whole process. And you can learn a lot more than I'm telling in this video about the program. Uh, but if you've been struggling for a long time, this is how you're going to improve. All right. There's no other way to get fluent in a language than this. The only thing better than this is plugging a like a matrix style plug in the back of your neck and downloading the language <laughs> automatically. I would love to do that. That is not possible yet. Maybe it will be possible in the future, but until then, this is the second easiest thing you can do, or really the easiest. All right, let's see here. Thanks a lot for your advice. It's my pleasure. Let's see, it's difficult to understand people. I'm from, oh, I'm in Chicago. Yes, that's my hometown, so I was in Chicago as well. That's where I'm from. Uh, again, if you spend more time with people and, and learn it in a systematic way, 
then you will become much more confident about how you're communicating with people. You will understand people more easily, again, if you're getting that focused, uh, focused review. That's why we use naturally varied review. Now this will make more sense if you go back and watch the video again, uh, but it's a little bit over an hour, I think, but it's worth your time. And a lot of this is kind of repetition for later people, but just go back and watch the video again and you will see how the process works. All right, well, so same here in Chicago. Yes. All right, how to improve my pronunciation sometimes the teachers do not understand me. So this will improve your pronunciation, your grammar, every aspect of your learning will improve just by doing this. So it's actually me like delivering that for you. So if, if we're going to the gym, I'm exercising for you and you're getting stronger. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's like only possible to do this with language learning because everything else is like kind of physical muscle memory that you need to do. But with this process, I can get you fluent. That's why I like what I do, because I can control it. I don't, I don't trust you to practice or anything, so I have to make it really easy. All right? Is anyone here? Yes, people are here. If I watch a movie with uh, double subtitle, will that help with fluency? I would just watch it if you're watching uh, the English with an English movie. Uh, that's where, that's where you're, you're okay. All right? Is the program to all levels of learning? I'm an intermediate. So what Fluent for Life does is it takes the people who already know a lot of English but can't speak, it helps you understand like a native and give you the naturally varied review that make you feel confident so you speak. So it's for intermediate and advanced learners because really the, the language itself is it's kind of like a tree. So you begin with the trunk down here. This is basic grammar and things that are in all conversations. And, that, and at this level, like the intermediate level, you're just learning different topics. So you might learn about biology or cars or fashion or whatever those things are. So the, the language level doesn't really get, it, it's not infinitely more difficult. At some point, you're, like the, the language level stops and you're just about learning different topics. So this is where Fluent for Life is. So you learn about business, casual, uh, all kinds of topics. So there are a hundred different topics and you can choose what you learn with. In the program. So if you'd like to learn more about Fluent for Life, you can click on the link uh, after I have one in the video or just go to EnglishAnyone.com and you can click on the link there for Fluent for Life. Let's see if I, uh, yes, your video is a well of knowledge. Glad to hear it. Uh, so I have a friend who lives in Chicago. She will visit in Japan. Oh, she will. She'll visit in Japan in the future. All right. All right. Very good. I'm going to, I think, end this before I continue to get more questions. You can hear me losing my voice already, but it's always a pleasure to help, even if I can only help a few people see the language and see language learning in a different way than I have done my job. Uh, and especially if you start learning like this, you really can change the way you speak in, in like days. It's really that, it's really that amazing. Uh, if you learn the right way, you learn it systematically. So if you'd like to do that, uh, learn more about Fluent for Life by clicking on the link in this video or it's why don't you update Masterclass about Fluent for Life in order to see your friend Richard. <laughs> you know, Richard, Richard moved back to the States many years ago. Uh, so that's why he's not, he's not in any, any more recent videos from Master English Conversation, uh, which is in Fluent for Life. Uh, but yes, so the, all of the, the lessons that are in there, there's more than enough. Uh, a hundred different lesson sets about all kinds of topics. So you have more than enough to get fluent and each lesson set gets you fluent in that, in that kind of like the conversation topic or the grammar point or whatever in less than 30 days. So if, you, if you've been struggling for a long time and finally want to actually get fluent and you want to be speaking fluently in the next 30 days, that's how you do it. All right, I think that should be it for me. Thanks. And all right, again, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I hope you have improved. And uh, I do recommend if you joined late to go back and watch the beginning of this when it is all set up on YouTube. Uh, and have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next video. And if you decide to join Fluent for Life, I'll see you in there. Bye-bye.